Good evening, everyone. My name is Danny Mando, and uh, I welcome you to FJMC cooking webinar. We have not had one of these in quite a while. I would say it's been seven months since we had them. We had a lot of them last year. And then, uh, so we were trying to think of how we could uh, revitalize our cooking webinar program. And I thought, hmm, Iris, she'd be terrific. So who is Iris Sun and Shine? Um, so some of you, most of you don't, but some of you might know that I actually worked for a cooking store for over two years called Sur La Top. And I worked for them in the Chestnut Hill Mall, which is very close to my house. And I worked for them until they liquidated. <laughs> They're still around a little bit, but they liquidated the entire Northeast right after the pandemic. And when I first started there, I was working one night and this really, uh, actually, I can tell you when it was. It was the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. It was a Wednesday evening and this customer came up and she said to me, oh, well, you know, I just bought this, what well, I don't remember what the item was, but whatever she bought, she just bought it in Bloomingdale's. If you match the price for it with your black, I see you're putting up your black Friday uh, signing. If you match the price, I'll go return it there and I'll buy it from you. So of course I did that. And that customer happened to be Iris. So she comes back and we start chatting and she says, oh, you know, I really love to cook. And uh, do you guys hiring? I go, really? Yeah, of course we're hiring. And make a longer story short, we hired Iris and then we started to chat. And I found out that we had a lot of commonalities. Um, where she was a member of the tribe for sure. Um, but she's also a super volunteer uh, like I am. Um, she actually goes to temple right around my block. Um, and she's a really interesting person, a great salesperson. She could sell anything, anything, particularly cookware, because she really is passionate about it. So, uh, so Iris um, actually grew up in Israel until she was around uh, five and a half years old, uh, then moved to the States. Uh, she... Her parents, uh, she still speaks Hebrew to her parents. She was actually born in Germany. Iris was actually born in Germany, made Aliyah, and then came here to the Brookline Newton area. Uh, so really, uh, she has willingly presented uh, this presentation tonight. She's going to do a YouTube. It's going to be run around half an hour. We sent everyone who did register the ingredients after we're done. Uh, we're going to take questions. We can take it through the chat. Um, we would ask everyone. We've already muted you. So once we're done with the uh, YouTube, you can unmute yourself. You can ask questions directly if you'd like, or just go through the chat. I do see I have some of my Temple Emanuel friends here, which is great. And some of my uh, my other sports webinar uh, my other webinar that I do run is with my good buddy, David Kravitz, who's on the call as well. So he's as good a cook as I am, which is not very much, <laughs> but we still enjoy it. So without any further ado, I'm very pleased and proud to present with you my friend, Iris Sonnenschein. Iris, take it away. Hi, everybody. Um, in a minute, I'm going to try to figure out how to share my screen with you for the um for the Zoom, but I did want to say, Danny, I had not bought the dish at Bloomingdale's. They would not sell it to me. For oh, that. that's I'm right. Kidding. That's right. But I saw I saw a live sale there. there you yes. go. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to uh, try to get the the video started. As Danny said, I'm available for questions. Uh, hopefully, some answers as well when it's over. Um, and I, I hope you enjoy it. Let's see if it works. Hello. If you're joining us today, you love to cook, and in particular, you love to cook eggplants. I have two separate eggplant 
recipes for you today. The first one comes from Ita Mausrulovich and Sarit Packer in their book called Honey and Co. They are married to each other. Their restaurant in London is called Honey and Co. They have many other cookbooks that I highly recommend and they also run a fabulous uh, podcast where they sit around and talk to cookbook authors from around the world and make you salivate even though it's only audible. The second recipe comes from Yotam Ottolenghi from his latest book, Ottolenghi mm -hmm. Test Kitchen mm -hmm. Shelf Love. Um, I've been in love with Yotam Ottolenghi for many years since he came out with his book, Jerusalem, that he co-wrote with Sammy Tamimi. He actually worked with Chef Srulovich and Packer at some point, so it's all kind of in one family. The two recipes are based on roasted vegetables. The first one from Honey & Co called um, The Big Itzik is named after a restaurant owner that the chefs ran into in Turkey in one of their many travels. It is basically roasted vegetables that are then chopped up and mixed with an acid and herbs and can act as a dip uh, or frankly you can just keep eating it with a spoon. While I was roasting the eggplants, I decided to throw a couple of extra on the grill so that I could make Ottolenghi's recipe called Burnt Eggplant Tomato and Trina. When you go through this video, you will see that I'm clearly not a professional videographer or talker or cooker or chefer, but I love to cook, I love to make food, and I love to talk about it as I go. The first recipe is very straightforward roast the vegetables, cut them up, mix them. The second recipe has a couple of different steps. They are still super simple. You actually start with the topping. There are two toppings. One is this combination of uh, garlic and some uh, seeds. And then the second one is a trina. And then you're basically making a tomato sauce into which you throw the roasted eggplants. You'll see that in the video, because I had leftover roasted vegetables from the big itzik, I threw those Which in as well. Get. There's never a reason not to throw in additional vegetables. Mm -hmm. I take recipes as general mm -hmm. suggestions. Do the flavors go together? Do they meld together? And if they do, the worst that can happen it's is it's not going to be phenomenal. With these chefs though, 99.9% .9 of the time it's going to be phenomenal no matter what you do. I hope you really enjoy this. It's a lot of fun to make and it is so delicious to eat. So the recipe calls for two eggplants, one red and one yellow bell pepper, or two reds if you don't have the yellow one, which I did not, and one red onion. Um, I'm going to also grill eggplants that I need for a different recipe, and there's nothing wrong with having more vegetables, so I'm putting more on the grill. I also wanted to show you what some gorgeous eggplants look like. There are no blemishes is what you want to look for. You want to make sure there are no soft spots anywhere, that it's all firm and lovely. And then you want to be sure to poke holes in them with a fork or a skewer uh, just to make sure they don't explode on the grill for you. You can see that my grill is super hot. It's going to cool down the minute I open it because uh, we are in December right now. I want to make sure that you can see all these lovely holes I made in the eggplants. You want to char these vegetables so they are truly black on each side. So you're going to be coming out to the grill uh, probably every 10 to 15 minutes just to check and see how they're doing, uh, if it's time to turn them over. The peppers will obviously cook the fastest. These eggplants are going to be on here for a nice long time. and. It's okay, but it's not really charred enough. I really want these babies burnt, burnt, burnt. So I got a little nervous and decided to come back after five minutes. Um, and I'm glad I did. This is what you're looking for. Really super, super charred. 
um, there was a bad spot on that, which is why you're seeing a cut there. And then you just want to turn them over a little bit. And I'm just going to roll the onions a little bit. They're definitely not ready. The eggplants are absolutely not ready. So now for, let's split the difference and make it eight minutes. These are really starting to go. I found that once they start, they don't need equal amounts of time. Oh, that one's gorgeous. Look how black that one is. I've got this one, flip and him over. One more flip. And yeah, I have asbestos fingers. So I'm gonna keep rolling these around. I want them to be really soft. It's obviously gonna take longer than the peppers. And you can see that um, the eggplants are starting to get a little wrinkly, but still not ready to turn them over. And these really look fabulous. They're nicely charred everywhere. A lot of places will tell you to put them in a paper bag in order to let them steam so they're easier to peel. Um, I actually like to put a paper bag inside a plastic bag. That way, even if they're in there, I can pick up the bag. So here we go. My peppers are now inside the bag that's inside the bag. I'm gonna close them up, roll them all together, and just leave them alone. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go back to the eggplants. So. That is actually still not charred enough, but I will turn them over um, for now. If I peel away some of the charred skin, it's definitely a little softer in here. They're pretty big, so I'm assuming they'll take some more time. This one's looking a little better. This one's almost done. Mm. That one's pretty done, I'm pulling it off. This one needs a little more, so I'm gonna also lean that against an edge. And uh, I don't know, five more minutes. This is a charred eggplant. Can look totally crispy here, actually. Um, and yeah, I cracked it a little. The inside is creamy and deliciousness. So those are coming off the grill. I think the onions are going to come off. I can squeeze them nicely. So that's coming off. Can I squeeze this one? Yes, I can. So it's coming off. I think I'm just gonna leave this one on, but uh, turn off the grill. All right, so what I wanna do with the eggplants now that they're cool enough to handle, I'm just gonna slice them and put them in a colander. I want them to drain. Uh, the liquid that's in them is pretty bitter and I'm either gonna drain it now or I'm gonna be trying to drain it later. So this is easier. All of them are gonna go in here. To go back and look at our peppers, they look pretty sad, but they're gonna be very yummy. So what you wanna do is peel them. It's okay if there are a few uh, sort of charred pieces stuck on them. It's just gonna be deliciousness added onto deliciousness. Doesn't take too long, but it's a little, a little patchy. What do you think? You enjoying this process too? And then when it comes to the onions, we're just going to peel the outside because it will have charred and gotten very hard. And inside, look at that. You have beautiful, soft, uh, pulpy. Oh my God, it smells amazing. And I'm gonna be cutting them just into random pieces. There's no there's nothing pretty about this dish, it's just delicious. So here we have our drained eggplants. You can see when I open them, they are absolutely creamy and amazing looking inside. You wanna take a regular spoon, tablespoon, soup spoon, and just pull the threads of the meat out, leaving the charred skin behind. And on the other side too. So I would normally throw away the uh, charred skins and I will today too, but I will tell you that I went to this amazing restaurant in New York called Tina. Unfortunately, it succumbed to COVID. And the chef there took the charred skins and blitzed them together with Trina to make a very, very deep gray colored uh, sauce. 
and then he served it half and half with regular trina and then this smoky, smoky, smoky uh, eggplant skin charred trina. It was absolutely gorgeous on the plate and delicious. So you wanna sort of break up the eggplant and mix it together with the red peppers. I put three in here instead of two and the uh, red onion, I put more than I was supposed to also. In goes uh, one very finely chopped garlic clove, uh, one squeezed lemon. You do wanna make sure that you don't get the uh, pips in there because that's just horrible to bite on. There's a lot of lemon here. I love lemon. I rarely think anything has too much lemon. The recipe also calls for some apple cider vinegar, but because this lemon was so juicy, I'm gonna wait and taste it. Then I'm gonna chop up uh, the parsley and put it in there. And the recipe says to finish it up with about eight to 10 leaves of mint. I happen to think those should go in at the very end just before serving, because once you cut them, they tend to go a little black and limp looking. Even if you just rip them, they're still gonna look a little black and limp. So. I'm going to put in the chopped parsley. I'm gonna hold off on the mint leaves. So the recipe calls for just a couple of tablespoons, but um, as I told you at the beginning, recipes for me are suggestions. So I'm gonna start with this and see what I think of it once it's done. Definitely going to add some salt. and uh, mix it around. So this has been sitting basically for the whole afternoon. I'm getting ready to um, put it on the table. Here are my mint leaves. I'm going to rip them into small little pieces. Again, I said that I, when I do them in advance, I find that they wilt. This gives me a chance to have them look green a little bit longer. I don't really follow the recipe. I really like mint almost as much as I like lemon. So I'm just putting them in there. I'm gonna mix it around. I'm gonna give it to my videographer to taste. What do you think? Really good, lemony, smoky, really smoky since everything had been on the grill. I'm going to put it out on a nice plate and uh, there you have it, the big eatsick. First thing you do is start heating your pan on very low. Uh, it doesn't really matter how long it's gonna stay on low, but you want your pan to be ready for you. And while that pan is heating up, I'm going to thinly slice two garlic cloves. The thinner the better because, uh, you know, crunching into pieces that are too thick is just not too fun. You also have to make sure that your partner is eating this with you because this is pretty pungent. And then to those, I'm going to be adding probably about a couple of tablespoons of uh, pine nuts. If you don't have pine nuts or if the sticker shock is as unbelievable as it's becoming, you can use any kind of nut. You're basically looking for the crunch so we're in New England, you can even use pepitas. I'm gonna take a kind of a big spoon of cumin seeds, same amount of coriander seeds, and I'm going to crush them roughly. I could use a mortar and pestle, but I don't really want it to become a powder. Uh, I just want some of them to crack open. I can also just run a knife through them 
<clears throat> make sure you're not using a nice knife. Uh, this is sort of the, the ox labor going on here. Back at my pan, and I'm just gonna give some good glugs of uh, olive oil. And you can see that the pan is really nice and hot because the oil in here is very, very free and liquid. I'm gonna start by adding my garlic pieces. Right away, I'm gonna throw in the uh, pine nuts. my cumin and coriander, and a hefty bit of pepper. I love Aleppo pepper. It's um, <coughs> from Aleppo, uh, but it doesn't have too sharp a spiciness to it, but it definitely has a beautiful peppery flavor to it. I'm gonna turn this way down, even though it's been on low, whoops, uh, because you don't want the pine nuts uh, or the garlic to burn. Once it's fragrant and the garlic has tinged a little bit, a little bit more. Again, I don't really want to bite into raw garlic, so that is why I'm keeping this on a little bit more, but keeping a very close eye. I wish you could smell this. Cumin and coriander two spices that just bring me into the Mediterranean instantly. So fragrant here, amazing. Adding a little bit of salt, mixing it all up and basically topping is done, ready to go. For the trina sauce in this particular recipe, you're not making an actual trina sauce as you would get in a restaurant or serve with your falafel or shawarma. It's uh, just the paste itself and um, ice water or water. So the longest step is really just mixing up the paste uh, because there's always the ground sesame at the bottom, you wanna make sure that it's nicely mixed. Best implement for this in my mind is the Mighty Chopstick. And for this particular case, you just want uh, equal amounts of the Trina paste and water because you want it to be nice and liquidy. So, I don't know, let's do two, two soup spoons. I think the original recipe is two tablespoons of trina and two and a half tablespoons of water. When you're mixing trina, you want to use ice water. I don't understand the science behind it, but it makes a huge difference. So I'm going to start with just a little bit. Uh, mix it up, you want it to be very liquidy. Again, we're just using this as a topping at the very end, and so um, you don't want the thick, the thick stuff that you usually get. This looks pretty good to me. It's pourable, done. For the tomato sauce in this dish, uh, you're going to need an onion, four garlic cloves, about half a teaspoon-ish of sugar, about a tablespoon-ish of tomato paste, a 14 to 15 ounce can of chopped tomatoes, salt and pepper, and about, the recipe calls for seven tablespoons of water. That's a little bit under half a cup-ish. Everything is to the touch. You're looking for consistency and then taste as you go. Then I'm going to start by chopping up one onion. In this book, uh, Autolenghi's Test Kitchen, or OTK, there's always a space for you to add your own notes. And uh, Autolenghi also adds uh, sort of a by the way. So by the way, on this recipe, you can use pre-made tomato sauce. If you have a favorite tomato sauce, go ahead and use it. 
the pan's been waiting for me. Several good glugs of olive oil. I am gonna turn the heat up a little bit and adding my finely chopped onion. You notice it's not sizzling. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit, but the idea is not to brown and crisp the onion. I want it to just turn golden and I want it to be nice and soft. I'm gonna let this go for at least six minutes and see how it's doing. It has actually been six minutes. I did come in and stir a couple of times and you can see that some of them are a little browner, but overall it's just a beautiful golden color. I used that time while it was cooking to finally chop my garlic. Again, four cloves, so that is going in. Along with a tablespoon-ish of uh, tomato paste. Actually, I think next time I make this, I might try it with some chalisa paste instead and see how that goes. You wanna stir it together. Most important thing when you are frying garlic is not to let it burn. It becomes horribly bitter and um, you usually have to throw the whole thing out, which is such a sad moment if that happens. To this, I'm gonna add the canned uh, chopped tomatoes. Um, I couldn't find regular canned chopped tomatoes at the store, so this actually has a little bit of chili and cilantro in it. It can't hurt. I'm also going to add the water. Make sure you get all the bits from everywhere. Heat is going to go up because I want to bring it to simmer, but first you start at a boil. Sugar. And that's really just to counteract the acidity of the tomatoes. Usually when you use something with tomatoes, if you're making a sauce, you want to add something sweet. Or instead of tomato paste, you can add ketchup and that already has sugar in it. A hefty amount of uh, black pepper and a little pinch of salt. Canned tomatoes tend to be very salty and you want to make sure it's not overly salted. I'm going to bring this to a boil and then I'm gonna lower it to a simmer. Recipe says 18 minutes, nice number. Uh, I'm just gonna let it go until it's nice and thick, which is what I'm looking for. You might remember that when we made the big itzik, I had made a couple of extra vegetables. I already used some of them up, but I do have one roasted red pepper and one roasted red onion left. I think I'm going to chop them up and add them into the mix with the sauce. Uh, I know it's not in the recipe, but it totally doesn't matter because it's just a recipe. It is a suggestion for a combination of flavors that go together. I believe that roasted onions and peppers definitely go together with um, roasted eggplants and tomatoes. So this way I don't have to waste anything. I've had too many sandwiches with the roasted red peppers lately. I still have about half the amount of time left on my sauce, so I'm going to take this and add it to the sauce and let it all cook down together. The most time consuming part of this recipe is roasting the eggplants, but uh, we already did that when we got the eggplants ready for the big eating. So they have drained. They've actually been waiting a couple of days. I'm gonna open them up and pull out the meat. It's so slimy when it's cold. It's, if you have young children, it's great to let them do this because they can't believe they're allowed to touch it. It has been 18 minutes. And you can see that this is much, much, much thicker than what we started with. Um, and if you had used the, what the original recipe called for, which were the whole tomatoes that you crushed, it would be probably even a little thicker. 
The 18 minutes at a low simmer gave a chance for the water to evaporate and to thicken this up. And you might say, well, then why did we put the water in if it's just going to evaporate? It gives a chance for the rest of the ingredients to sort of marry together and really meld without burning. So this is the consistency you're looking for. I'm going to turn off the heat and add my chopped, uh, roughly chopped eggplants and mix really, really well. You want it to be totally uniform, totally incorporated, one sauce, not tomato sauce with eggplants in it, but an eggplant tomato sauce. Take your time. You want every little bit of eggplant to be covered in every little bit of tomato and in our case, also a little bit of red pepper and red onion. The last bit of work is just chopping up some dill. It's going to be uh, mixed in with the sauce and then a little bit of, you know, just pretty green on top because the more colors you have in a dish, the more appetizing it looks. If you don't have dill, don't use dill, use something else. If you don't like dill, don't use dill, use something else. Parsley, cilantro, uh, really an herb of your choice is all going to work in here. Our five minutes are up. Chopped dill is gonna go in here. Mix it all together. The smell is just truly unbelievable. Gonna taste. Oh my God, that is freaking delicious. I have never made an Ottolenghi dish. It doesn't matter how many changes I've made to it. It is always truly out of this world. This one's a little spicy. I put quite a bit of black pepper and Aleppo pepper in here. Uh, so it's a good thing I like spicy. In putting this all together, I'm going to take this incredible sauce onto a pretty plate. Spread it out nicely. Remember our topping that we made before, which was the garlic and the cumin seeds, coriander seeds, pine nuts, a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm going to sort of double that on top. Of course, every time I serve this, it's gonna end up getting mixed in. It doesn't really matter. That's so, so good. you just need to go with it and then the cleanup that we made again no lemon juice no garlic because there's plenty of flavor in here I'm just going to uh, try to drizzle this pretty Sprinkle some chopped dill or parsley or cilantro if that's what you picked. And uh, there you have it. Otolenghi's burnt eggplant and tomato sauce. Hold on, Iris. We'll be right with you. All right. Well, <clears throat> there was a couple of things that I didn't tell you about Iris. Um, she is also a uh, tutor, Hebrew school. So she obviously um, is very uh, bought into her Yiddish guy. She uh, and she should go into this for a living because that was really a professional uh, presentation. Tom, Sudo, and myself have seen many of these. 
And uh, you're pretty much, that was as good as it gets. We've had some, and she's a lay lady. She's not a professional. She did this out of fun. And I don't think you've ever done this before, have you? No, oh, so Yashikawa. Well, very, very great job. You actually have several questions. We could ask the dog or we could ask you. Like uh, <laughs> so where do you get Aleppo pepper? So I uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I couldn't hear the video. So I'm hi daddy. Oh my dad got on this too. Um I, you can get Aleppo pepper at any good spice shop. Before COVID, one of my favorite things to do was to go to Calustian's in New York City, which is a Costco sized um, spice and rice and any, any dry good that you would ever use. They also sell online. It's just, um, it's just a, a pepper that does not burn your tongue, but has a very, um, just a gorgeous round flavor that I, I love putting in, in all my dishes, actually. Thank you. So I'm going to open it up now to, uh, to the group. If you guys can unmute yourselves and feel free to, uh, if you have any questions, see if, see what's going on here. Tom, you always have a question. Oh, you're on mute though, Tom. We can't hear you. I'm un I'm unmuting everybody. So there we go. Everybody should be able to unmute themselves right now. They so my my question is, I, I love eggplant. How do you know? You know, it always looks like it's black when you're grilling it. How do you know when it's really done? You have to squeeze, and if you're going to squeeze it, it always breaks open and kind of loses. Right. So what I, I what I tried to show, and I know it, it lasted a little bit longer with all those grill photos, is when you want to char eggplant, you're bringing it to the point where it's black. If you touch it with an implement, it should feel crispy, like almost like oh, you've gone too far with it. And when you open it up, it should be creamy. It's actually very hard to overcook eggplant because it takes so much longer than you expect. Again, depending on your grill, depending on how cold it is outside. It's it's about a... hmm? Eggplant. Yes. <laughs> Daddy, you have to mute yourself. Yeah. Daddy, can you mute yourself? Sorry, guys. <clears throat> All right, it's good. Sorry for my phlegm. Okay. <clears throat> so you can, uh, it's again, it's very hard to over, between half an hour to an hour on a grill and you have to turn it a lot. So uh, my very good friend, Vivi Greenfield asks, what are the suggested pairings with these dishes? As in wine pairings? So David. wine pairings. That I'm the wrong person to ask. Uh, the dishes, the other, you know, like aside from pita bread, um, what other, uh, what would you, what would you serve them with? Not Num one. Number one would be lamb. So when I was making the, um, the big eat seek and you heard the sizzling in the background, I was making lamb meatballs with um, a pomegranate sauce that would go with it. So lamb or any roasted meat, I just happen to love lamb, would always go with it. Um, other roasted vegetables, but I ended up, I had a lot of the um, tomato sauce, the Ottolenghi tomato sauce left over at the end uh, after I ate it and ate it and ate it. Um, and so I actually mixed it with some spaghetti squash and put that all together. The, the flavors are pretty universal. I try always to see you know, we live in New England right now, so I can't go out and grab a pomegranate. What can I mix things with? So you can do zucchini instead of eggplant. You can pair it with any sort of zucchini cheese pasta dish that you have. I can't think of anything it would not go with, but that's because I would bathe in eggplant if I could. <laughs> so our question is, how long were the eggplants on the grill in total time? How long did mine, you have? Mine were close to an hour. Okay, good. And Iris, I have a question for you. Where did you learn all this stuff? 
because you, you're not a professional chef, although you, you're a teacher. So maybe just your combination of passion for cooking and. Uh, yeah, I, I love to cook and I'm, I'm a stupid collector of, um, of cookbooks and Adelangi as I, I don't know if you could hear the beginning. I, I, any one of his cookbooks. And then once you start with one of his cookbooks, you see who worked with him. And so I, I have too many cookbooks and uh, that's what, how I like to use my time is cooking. Oh, so I mean, here we have a great comment. So, someone from Toronto. You no, know, I have several FJMC friends up there. Thanks for the demo. Looks great and is vegan friendly for those who need it, which is good to know since my daughter's partner is vegan. We had an interesting Thanksgiving. Uh, going to rewrite the recipes and make my shopping list. So appreciate this program. Well, we appreciate you getting on, Roz, and uh, we hope to have more of these as we go forward now into the year. So, and Iris, I hope you join us on some of these. We've had very similar, uh, we've, we've done it all. So from barbecue to, uh, Tom's actually done a few. Um, himself he's quite the cook so it, it's a really nice uh nice sessions that we have for or our cooks at the yeah. fjmc hope you guys all try these they're not difficult and uh again if you don't have a grill do it in your oven but they're super super flavorful right all right does anyone else have any questions so there was a question that was mis misinterpreted danny about about wine pairings so with eggplant, which has been grilled, which is an earthy kind of um, Tom's texture, a wine expert. You, you know, you're looking at Cabernet Sauvignon, you're looking at a, a Syrah, maybe a Malbec in, in the red. You can do a, a Chardonnay in the white. Again, it's easy to talk about what wine pairings are. The truth is, if you like a wine, if you like a food, you're going to like the meal. So don't, you, know, <laughs> you don't have to be perfect with it, but you know. Uh, anything that, that's kind of grilled and you know, even though it's a vegetable, you think you think white wine with vegetables, you want something that has has earthy quality to it. You can tell that Tom knows his stuff, huh? Great. All right. Um, anything? Any other questions for Iris? Iris, thank you so 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 much. Um, that was really. Uh, I'm always was impressed with you. She she really was is uh, someone that does it all. So Daniel, um, there's, there's one more question. Yes. If you have some oh, minute. Were so there you recipes sent? Yes, they were sent. They were sent. But you you mentioned a number of other cookbooks. Like I I have the OTK one. What other cookbooks do you recommend? Any cookbook by Adelangi. Other okay. than so Nopi, which is his restaurant uh, north of Piccadilly, um, and I ate there and I met him. So total starstruck yeah. here. Um, his cookbooks, Jerusalem, plenty, plenty more simple. They're all uh, super flavorful. Actually, there's so many Israeli chefs out there right now. So the guys who put out and have the restaurant called um, Honey and Co. That's Itzik, Itzik uh, not Itzik, sorry, Itamal Surlovich and Salit Packer, the couple. They have amazing cookbooks out there. Uh, Adina Sussman has a cookbook called Sababa, which is redonkulous. Um, uh, I'm blanking on her name, but her, her uh, restaurant in New York is Belabusta, um, also incredible. And if you just start, if you go on Instagram and you put one of these in, you'll see all the others because it's one big community and they all work with each other, um, read each other's recipes. Uh, and there's a lot of really amazing cooking coming out of Israel that is not just hummus and falafel. Thank you. The aromas of these dishes are so enticing. They came right through the internet. <laughs> well, David, you know, the good there, news there's, a, there's, a, there's actually a play on, on one of these recipes in, in the OTK book where you use salmon. You don't use the eggplant, but if there's salmon over tahino, yeah. which looks very good. You can't miss. You can't. He is an unbelievable chef. Anything he recommends, even if you play around with it, the foundation is so strong that it works. And the um, the chef for Belabusta is Enat Admuni. She has a couple of others, and then there's some Persian cookbooks out there too. There, play around. It's just fun. Tom, you know what you're talking about, right? You 
Of course they do. No, she, it, it, in the cookbook, he adds a lot. You know, it's basically, here's the recipe, but here are 10 other things you could do with it. Right. You, you want to add meat, you want, you know, and then he puts in, it's, it's kind of interesting. Again, I, I will tell you, the recipes tend to be, little, some of my saw are pretty complicated. Some are pretty easy. So it's an interesting book. I, I worry me, it's not a kosher cookbook, no. uh, but there's a lot of vegetarian in there. Well, he started writing his articles for The Guardian uh, in, in uh, London as a vegetarian uh, article. So every week it would just be a vegetarian recipe. And then somebody said, you know, you could put these with meat. He's like, well, I put them with meat, but I was asked to write a vegetarian one. So um, Simple at Plenty is a vegetarian cookbook. And Plenty More, I think, is also a vegetarian cookbook. Nopi is complicated. That's why I, I put that one aside. All right, great. All right, so our plan for the cooking webinars going forward is uh, I hope to connect with, uh, we have an Israeli chef we're trying to connect with and do a series of cooking webinars. You will hear more to come on that if we can kind of, we're in our first stages of developing that, um, that program. Um, so I'm going to let everybody go unless there's any other questions. All right. Well, thank you, Iris. That was fabulous. Iris, thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you so much. We'll see everyone next time. Have a good night. Lila Tov, everyone. Mm -hmm.